This is Local 5 News. Good evening and thank you for joining us for Local 5 News at 10. I'm Erin Taylor. We begin tonight with a developing story out of Kenosha where an officer involved shooting is under investigation. The shooting took place right after 5 tonight. The video you're seeing is of the scene in the moments following that shooting. It happened after officers were called to the 2800 block of 40th Street for a reported domestic incident. According to police, the victim was taken by helicopter to an area hospital and is in serious condition. The Wisconsin Department of Justice was called in to handle the investigation. This is a developing story. You can stay tuned to Local 5 for more details as they become available. Turning to local news now. For 17 years, the Cruise for Cancer event has been gathering motorcycle enthusiasts for a day of biking across Green Bay. Local 5's Calvin Lewis shows us how the event is bringing awareness to cancer. I understand cancer and the, the families and just the share of support, a little love, and, and that, that's what it's about. Uh, and we're doing that, and uh, now financially, that's really important. Diagnosed with cancer in 2003, Jerry Parents would embark on a journey that would change his life and those around him. A former captain for the Green Bay Police Department, Parents left the role for another, director of corporate security with the Green Bay Packers. Today, he's volunteering his time for a different cause with a passion that began at an early age. Cancer affects everyone. I don't think there's a person that you can talk to that doesn't know somebody or even dealt with it personally. And so um, everyone can relate and everyone has a friend or family member that has either survived and beat it or lost their battle. Each year, one or two families from the area have been involved in the Cruise for Cancer, where they're placed in a vehicle with a driver to take them around and forget about what they're dealing with. For 2020, they've incorporated essential workers and first responders. This year we have five, you know, and they're all related either to policemen or firemen, their families. And it just shows again the human nature of cancer. It touches everybody. Since the event's inception back in 2003, about $2 million has been raised for various cancer related organizations. But no matter the money raised or the time donated, it all comes down to one thing. And that's family. Every year it's the same people that come back, but it's all because of cancer. Each and every one here has, has a little part of their life that's been touched with cancer. Grandpas, family, good neighbors, work people. That's what it's about. It started out small, and now um, I think Jerry Perrins is now a household name. Everybody knows who he is and what we're about. And um, we're all volunteers, so all of the money stays right here in Northeast Wisconsin helping people battling cancer. And if you couldn't make it in attendance for today's ride, you could always make a donation around cruiseforcancer.org. For now, reporting in Green Bay, Calvin Lewis, Local 5 News. What a great event. Thanks, Calvin. And more than 100 motorcyclists turned out for today's event. Making headlines across the state. In Milwaukee, rallies called for more federal funding for the U.S. Postal Service continued today. With 73 days until Election Day, activists say they want to make sure the USPS can run smoothly so that absentee ballots can be sent out and received on time. Outside a post office downtown Milwaukee, protesters had a message to deliver. We have to help them understand that your vote matters. We have to help them understand that the U.S. Postal Service matters. Their actions come amid an influx of changes at the national level they say are slowing mail delivery. Our union. Gordon Scarry retired after being a letter carrier in Milwaukee for more than 20 years, but worries about the direction USPS is headed in. They're going to destroy a service that everybody relies on that goes everywhere in the country. We will scour every every plan. Postmaster General Louis DeJoy removed hundreds of mail sorting machines. Measures he says are cost cutting and won't affect delivering absentee ballots ahead of November's election. The Postal Service is fully capable and committed to delivering the nation's election mail securely and on time. Our post. Protesters argue that issues with absentee ballots could even affect the outcome of the presidential race this year, especially considering President Trump won Wisconsin by just 22,000 votes in 2016. 
there won't even be a need for an election if we don't have this opportunity for absentee ballots because of the COVID-19 pandemic. DeJoy says he'll halt further changes to USPS until after the election, but that doesn't put letter carriers at ease. What happens after that? What happens to the post office after that first Tuesday in November? Now, when asked to comment, the Milwaukee USPS forwarded a national statement saying they have more than enough capacity to handle the election mail volume. News now out of the Fox Cities. Work continued today on the mural going up outside of Harbor House. The painting is getting close to its final form, but their work isn't done yet. When the mural is complete, the artist hopes that it will help bring community awareness to the domestic violence shelter and its mission. I think about how many people pass by here every single day. And had no idea what this space was, and now there's a giant mural, right? Like it's enormous, can't miss it, colorful, vibrant, enough maybe that somebody would ask a question: What is that place? What do they do there? Yeah, you can't miss it. The artist says he hopes these questions will lead to more community members donating to Harbor House. Turning now to the latest from our DC newsroom. We're less than 24 hours from the start of the Republican National Convention. Washington correspondent Kelly Meyer caught up with the convention team as it pushes out the finishing touches on the plans. We think it's going to be very uh, engaging and entertaining. RNC spokeswoman Liz Harrington says next week's convention will be uplifting, although much of it is still under wraps. If we're going to have surprises. Uh, between 10 and 11 p.m. every single night. Harrington did tell us the president will be nominated in a live roll call in Charlotte, North Carolina. 336 will be there in person. Uh, they do have the health protocols in place. Everyone's been tested before they got on a plane and went to Charlotte. Harrington says to expect President Trump to be involved every night leading up to his speech at the White House. I predict it's going to be one of the greatest speeches he's ever given. Harrington says it will be similar to his State of the Union speech and his Mount Rushmore address for the 4th of July. There will be a, a, some sort of fireworks, figuratively and literally. <laughs> the RNC follows this week's Democratic National Convention, which one Democratic lawmaker I spoke to says is a tough act to follow. This was the best convention of all time. North Carolina Democrat G.K. Butterfield says the Republicans have their work cut out for them. I'm confident that the Democratic message will be far superior from the Republican message that we will hear next week. Counselor to the President Kellyanne Conway called the Democrats' convention a missed opportunity. The two most popular words of the Democratic convention were not Joe Biden or economic revival. They were Donald Trump. The Republican convention gavels in Monday in Charlotte. Reporting in Washington, I'm Kelly Meyer. And here's a detailed look at what we can expect from the RNC tomorrow. Scheduled speakers include former UN Ambassador Nikki Haley and House Minority Leader Kevin McCarthy, South Dakota Governor Kristi Noem, and school safety activist Andrew Polek. Then Vice President Mike Pence and President Donald Trump will address the virtual convention. More than 100 vehicles were on display at Eaton Town Hall today. We're taking a look at the, socially at the social distancing measures taken at the event, which featured more than just cars.